everybody. Welcome to this video on Scrum interview questions and answers from Career Ride. All of us know how popular is agile methodology in the world of project management. And since Scrum is a framework to actually implement it, it is no doubt very popular in managing software development projects. So definitely a very important framework to be aware of if you are in the world of software development and management. In today's video, let's see some very important conceptual questions usually asked to the scrum professionals during the interviews. And if you are really serious about cracking your next interview, make sure that you watch the complete video without skipping any parts of it. Ready? Fantastic. Let's start. Question number one. What is scrum? A very basic question to break the ice and start the interview. To answer this question, you can say, scrum is an agile framework that provides a structured yet flexible approach to software development. The development process here works in small iterations called as sprints. The four ordered steps defined in a sprint are sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review and sprint retrospective. At the end of each sprint, the team reaches a step closer to a shippable product increment. And as soon as a sprint retrospective concludes, a new sprint begins. The strength of scrum is it enhances collaboration while responding to the changing requirements of the project. So basically a practical way to implement the agile methodology you can say. So do you notice, I have not stopped just after the first sentence of my answer. I have tried to provide a little more information, a little more detail, making my answer complete. What this does is, it gives confidence to the interviewers that they are interviewing a good candidate on whom they can invest more time. Now another basic question which you must expect at every scrum interview is, what are the three pillars of Scrum. To answer this question you can say the three pillars of Scrum stand as its integral guidelines. They are number one transparency. Open and unobstructed communication is at the core of Scrum promoting trust and collaboration among the stakeholders. What this does is it helps in early detection of issues, promotes accountability, improving engagement and better decision making among various stakeholders. The second important pillar is inspection, which means consistent evaluation and review of the progress and the product. What this does is it helps the team make continuous adjustments and improvements to its approach. And it is these incremental enhancements that ultimately lead to the success of the project. The third pillar is adaptation. Adaptation in conjunction with inspection makes the team adjust their strategy and approach to reach the final destination. Many a times the team uncovers newer information and gets a deeper insight into the project while working on it. Adaptability allows it to correct its actions and approach both wherever and whenever required. And as I said earlier, it is these continuous adjustments that ultimately lead to the successful project or the product helping you gain higher customer satisfaction. Moving on to question number three. What are the key principles of Scrum Framework? Now, the key principles around which Scrum Framework centers are number one, empirical process control. This is the first and most important principle comprising transparency, inspection and adaptation. We just discussed in the previous question. The second one is self-organization. The thought here is to let the team take the ownership and make it feel emotionally connected to the project. Because see, the more a team is self-organized, more emotionally invested it will be in the project, taking the required actions on its own, needing lesser number of instructions and guidance from the seniors. The third one is time boxing. This is done by running the sprints. Since these sprints are time bound, they promote quick problem solving and decision making. You can't afford to keep lingering around with the same issue here. This makes the project stay on track for the delivery date and also fosters a better team spirit. The fourth principle here is value-based prioritization, which means that you try to add maximum business value to a project in the shortest possible time and prioritize your efforts accordingly. The next one is iterative development. This allows for midway changes and continuous learnings that can be applied to future iterations improving the overall project. And the last one is collaboration. One of the ways to achieve this collaboration is scrum boards 
that provide a clear picture of what work needs to be done, where the team is in the cycle and other such things, which boosts the culture of collaboration among the team members. The next important thing related to Scrum are its values. Expect a question from here as well. And the question can be as simple as, what are the values of Scrum? To begin your answer, you can say, Scrum values give the team the rules of conduct while working on a Scrum-based project. Basically, how a Scrum team should behave during the project. So, the five Scrum values that a team has to live by are, number one, courage. And they need a lot of it to tackle the challenging problems and doing what's right for the project. The courage here also means having the ability to go by Scrum values, even when the times are difficult. The second one is focus, which means that the Scrum team has to work with absolute focus in every single sprint to create the required product increment. The third important value here is commitment. The commitment here is not just of meeting the deadlines and milestones. It is the commitment of doing their best to meet the organization's vision of that project. The fourth is respect. Respect each other's views, opinions, experiences, culture, everything as a team. And it goes to even respecting the changing views and mind of the client during the project. The fifth value is openness. This means openness and honesty in communication among all the stakeholders. But it goes far beyond to even being open to change. The openness in communication boosts transparency and trust among the stakeholders. So these are the five values of Scrum that you should talk about to answer this question. I understand it got a little lengthy, so if need be, please replay this part of the video and try to take the notes also. Our question number five is, what are the different roles in Scrum? So see, there are three primary roles in Scrum, together called as Scrum Team. They are, number one, Scrum Master. If you look at the Scrum Master's profile, this person is not actually a project coordinator, manager or boss. He basically helps the team with proper adoption of Scrum. The second one is product owner. The person taking up this role works as the voice of the client to the development team. He is the one to define and prioritize the product backlog, make decisions on features to be included in each sprint based on the business priorities and ensures that the product that is delivered to the client meets their expectations. The third one is development team. The members of this team can be the people from different departments who collaborate to meet the cycle's objective successfully. So you see, these can be people with different profiles like software developers, analysts, models, sound artists or anyone else depending upon the need of the cycle. This group often meets and collaborates to meet the objectives of the project without having to wait for the instructions from any seniors. They work based on the core values and principles of Scrum. Now, the next question is about something without which it is impossible to imagine Scrum and it is Sprint. The question can be as simple as, what is a Scrum Sprint? Sprints are the time box series of iterations that break down the large complex project into smaller bits. This can be the shortest answer. But I would highly recommend that you don't stop just here if you want to stand out from the crowd. The interviewers like to hire candidates with in-depth knowledge. So, if you have spent time on learning Scrum and preparing for this interview, this is the time to demonstrate it. You can go on to add that the biggest advantages of using sprints are Number 1. They make the project more manageable. Then, the team is able to ship high quality work more frequently. And they also provide more flexibility in the project to adapt to any midway changes. A sprint cycle comprises sprint planning, daily scrum, sprint review and sprint retrospective. Now, you can further go on to add that the length of sprint usually ranges between 1 to 4 weeks depending upon the work the team has decided to take up in that particular sprint. Some of the important factors that affect the length of the sprint are number 1, complexity and overall duration of the project. Then number 2, market dynamics. For markets with rapidly changing conditions, you want to meet up with the changes quickly, keeping the sprints 
shorter. The third one is market viability. If the competition is high, you try to get the product out as soon as possible. And this needs the sprint length to be shorter. Then uncertainty of requirements also affect the length of the sprint. If the client is not very clear of what they want and the requirements keep changing often, shorter sprint lengths are preferred to adapt to the changes easily. And lastly, team's comfortability with the scrum also matters. So as you can see yourself, this type of an answer can immediately tell the interviewer about the level of your knowledge and preparation. And this is the real key to secure that position. The next question that we have got here is an interesting one. Pay attention. The question is, what are some of the recommendations you would make to a product owner for the success of the project? So see, these are basically the recommendations that will save you from the common challenges that arise during Scrum. The first thing to do here is, Keep the team aligned. One of the easiest ways to do this is set a well understood sprint goal for the team and ensure that the team clearly understands the evaluation criteria. Everyone walking in one direction towards a common goal will most likely not let them deviate. The second thing to do is have a well groomed backlog. This will ensure that the dependencies and priorities are set in order and the project stays on track. The third thing is clearly set up the intricate details of the work to be done during a sprint. This helps in extracting the best quality of work from a sprint. Capture the details of the tasks decided and the decisions made about a sprint. This official documentation works as a reference for the actual work and assessment both. And lastly, ensure that you have a good understanding of your velocity so that you don't overcome it or Undercome it. Now, the next question tries to understand your experience and practical understanding of Scrum. And the question is what are some of the red flags or signals of problems you would recommend a product owner to watch out for in the sprints? Now, to answer this question, you can say, well, some of the red flags a product owner should watch out for during the sprints are number one, being over ambitious with a sprint. It is very important to know how much work can be completed in a sprint. Don't pull in too many stories or overestimate the velocity. Because what this is going to do is, this will just set you and the team up for a failure. The second thing to watch out for is, are you trading quality and direction with speed? Ensure that everyone is aligned in their thoughts and actions, while they clearly know what they are trying to achieve in a sprint. You don't want to trade quality and direction with speed. Scrum believes in delivering a high quality product. The third thing is, if you have not kept any time for quality assurance, that is again a red flag. Then, taking too much of risky or uncertain work in a single sprint is also a red flag. The better way is, break down the task. Not paying attention to the team's feedback again sets you up for the failures. These feedback can be about the stories, velocity, client or anything else. So, these are some of the signals of the problems that a product owner must stay watchful for. So now that the discussion about sprints is on, you can expect some more detailed questions also on it. Quick to answer, but really, really important. And one such question can be, what are the three main artifacts of Scrum? Now to answer this question, you can say, well, the three main artifacts of Scrum are product backlog, sprint backlog, and sprint. These artifacts help in understanding the priority, progress and state of the project. Okay, so now the next obvious question that arises from here is, what is product backlog, release backlog and sprint backlog? Explain in simple words. Now, okay, let's deal with them one by one with the help of this diagram. The first one is product backlog. Imagine it like your to-do list for your project. Features you want to implement, improvements you want to make, everything. You can keep adding, deleting or changing the items on this list. From this product backlog comes your release backlog. These are the features that you want to work on in a particular release. And from here, you choose your sprints and the sprint backlog. So sprint backlog, as you can see in the diagram itself, these are the user stories or a focused list of tasks that you plan to complete during a specific period of time called a 
spread. Moving on to question number 11. What are story points and story boards in Scrum? A very important question. So, story points are measures or numerical values used to estimate the size of the work in a project and spread. The important thing to pay attention to here is that they do not determine the productivity of a team in any way. They basically help in estimating the total effort that will be required in implementing the product backlog. Because your story points may depend upon the complexity of the task, amount of work, uncertainties involved in completing that work and a lot of other such things. Let me give you an example. Suppose your sprint is about building the product page for an e-commerce website. Your story points in this case may look something like this. You may have to do things like uh, implement responsive design, fetch product data from the database, implement product filtering and so on. Based on the effort that will be required to do that particular task, you may assign the story points. For example, implementing responsive design, the story points assigned are 5, right? Depending upon the team's capability, depending upon the work required, you determine these points. Okay, now coming to storyboards. Storyboards are visual representation of a project's progress and they are used to share this progress transparently with the team. This storyboard generally has four columns, to do, in progress, testing and done. Each of the tasks that is assigned in that particular sprint is listed under one of these categories. The titles here are quite self-explanatory. I don't think I need to tell you much here. Now, our question number 12 here is a very good test of your basic understanding of Scrum. Pay attention. The question is, differentiate between epic user stories and tasks. Now, if you look at epic user stories and tasks, you can see a sort of hierarchy here, where epic lies at the top, followed by user stories and tasks. If we take an example and talk in terms of e-commerce, an epic could be something like implement enhanced checkout process. It can have various user stories under it. For example, add shipping address, select payment method, review the order, etc. And then there can be a lot of tasks to be done under each user story to implement it. The progress of an epic can be tracked across various spreads. Now, with this understanding, it becomes easier to understand the points of differences between them. Let's refer to this table that I have got for you here. We are trying to differentiate between the three based on various criteria. The first ones being scale and scope. So, from our example itself, we know that epic is large in scale while user stories and tasks are moderate and small comparatively. If we talk about the scope, an epic is about major themes, while in user stories, you talk about specific steps to implement that epic, and tasks are about actual steps you need to take. Depending upon the scope of the work, the timeline for planning is different for three of them. A very important part of Scrum, as we have seen, is collaboration. This collaboration in EPIC is at the higher level in the organization. User story is at the sprint level and the task at the team level. So, I really hope this helps you understand the difference between the three of them clearly. Again, if need be, try replaying this question for a better understanding. I am sure you will get it. Moving on to question number 13 now. Tell us something about the various scrum ceremonies. Now, scrum ceremonies are specific events or meetings that facilitate a sprint. There are four such events during a sprint. The first one is sprint planning. It is held at the beginning of the sprint to identify what work is to be done and delivered in this particular sprint and how. More effective is the planning, better is the delivery at the end of the sprint. The second one is daily scrum, also called as daily stand-up. It is a short daily meeting of 15 minutes or less. The purpose of this meeting is for each team member to inform what did they do the previous day, what they will do today now and if they are facing any issues with their work. This is a light-hearted and fun meeting, usually held in the morning. The third event is sprint review. This is held at the end of the sprint. This meeting is also called as iteration review. The purpose of this meeting is to demonstrate the work and take the feedback. This is more like an event to showcase team's work and celebrate the achievement. 
and lastly at number 4 you have sprint retrospective this is also held at the end of the sprint this meeting is to reflect on what went well during the sprint and what needs attention these things could even be the processes tools team dynamics and any other such things the purpose is to continue doing what helped and find a solution to what needs an improvement or attention okay so now let's move on to our question number 14 what is scrum of scrums and its significance now see, when you have a really big project with various scrum teams working on various facets of the project, it becomes important to ensure that there is a close coordination between all the scrum teams so that all of them can successfully work towards the common end goal. You can say this is a way to scale agile. One representative from each scrum team of the project participates in the daily stand-up of this higher level scrum or scrum of scrums. The requirement that you have from each scrum team here is again the same. Trust, respect and be completely aligned to achieve the final common goal. Here it is this scrum of scrums team that works as the release team for the client. Since many scrum teams here are working together, there is usually a need for some new roles like scrum of scrum master, QA leader, chief product owner, etc. The next important question in scrum is what are burn up and burn down charts? Now see, burn up and burn down charts are basically used to visually track and communicate the progress of the work in a project. A burn up chart displays the scope of a project and the work completed. On the other hand, the focus of the burn down chart is on the work remaining, showcasing the urgency of the work. Now a follow up question that may arise from here could be, how does a burn up chart help in managing the scope creep? Now see, scope creep is a very common phenomenon observed in project management as all of us know. It happens when more work is added to a project. This makes your project estimations about the delivery and the processes, budget, everything go wrong. In this scenario of scope creep, if you just look at the burn down chart, you might feel that the team is not working properly and sufficiently. But the burn up chart will immediately give you the reason for this by showing you a rise in the scope of the project. And it is this information that lets you make the required adjustments in the scope, delivery, timing, budget, everything. So, a very important question to pay attention to. Question number 16. What is Scrum 1? Scrum 1 is basically a hybrid project management framework, which is a combination of good features from Scrum and Kanban, both. Scrum contributes three important elements here. Sprints, daily stand-ups and retrospectives. If you look at Kanban's contribution to Scrum 1, its workflow visualization works at its core. Kanban's boards, cards, work in progress limits, the pull system and the continuous flow of work are the important elements Kanban contributes to Kanban. This question is more of a good to know type of a question. You may or may not be asked this. But our question number 17 is really really important. Pay attention. What is the purpose of Sprint 0 and Spike? Okay, so let's see them one by one. Sprint 0, which is also called as Preparation Sprint or Iteration 0, actually is the preparation phase before the start of actual sprints. This phase can cover activities like initial uh, planning, setting up the environment, forming the teams, architectural planning, assessing the risks, etc. However, if you look at spikes, they are targeted special investigations to deal with a specific issue. Or these may be the challenges, uncertainties, that arise during the sprint. They are time boxed and last for a very small period of time. Question number 18. What is velocity? Now see, this is a very simple question. But your answer to this one question can tell a lot about your understanding of Scrum. So to answer this question, you can say, velocity is a metric in Agile that helps you estimate how much work can a team complete in a given sprint. It is measured in terms of story points rather than the number of hours or days. Based on the historical velocity of a team, you can lay down your plan and forecast the deadlines for the projects. It also helps you in understanding the factors that can have a positive impact on increasing the velocity. Now, the number of story points a team is able to complete in a sprint depends on various factors, which means its velocity depends upon various factors like complexity of the work, experience of the team, 
their understanding with each other, any dependencies on other teams, etc. For example, you can say that with the improving team dynamics and increase in work experience, the velocity of a team can increase. Having an understanding of the average velocity of a team also helps you understand if you are over committing or under committing in a project. It also helps you improve your processes. Now, the important thing to pay attention to here is velocity is not a measure of productivity of a team because productivity would include other things also like quality of the work completed, delivered, efficiency of the processes, etc. Moving on to question number 19 now. Tell us something about MVP and MMP. Now see, MVP here stands for Minimum Viable Product. It is that version of a new product which has absolutely essential features in it to meet the basic requirements and provide a very basic functional product to the early adopters. This product meets their primary needs. No fancy, no frills, no glamour, nothing. The purpose here is to get a functional version of the product to the customers as soon as possible so that they can try it and provide a feedback about it. MMP on the other hand is minimum marketable product. It is that version of the product that has features to make it commercially viable and marketable. It means MMP is ahead of MVP. Moving on to question number 20 now. What is a release candidate? Now, release candidate, as the name suggests, is a product that is undergoing testing and review with the intention of releasing it to the client or the customers. With a release candidate, it is expected that it has all the planned features, there are no known defects, although the product is still undergoing testing. If any unexpected issues arise during testing, a rollback plan definitely stays in place. And if the product clears all the tests, it moves into the final production. And now the final question for today's video. What are some common impediments faced in Scrum? Now to make things easier, let us first of all understand what do impediments mean? That itself makes answering this question easier. Two close synonyms to the word impediment are hindrance and obstacle. So basically impediments are the challenges our scrum team may face that may prevent it from delivering the work. Some of the common impediments or the challenges a scrum team faces are insufficient training, skills or tools with the team, unclear product backlog, over ambitious sprint goals, insufficient sprint planning, poorly managed sprints, ineffective daily stand-ups, then technical debt could be there, bottlenecks in the dependencies, ineffective scrum master and finally unavailable stakeholders. But these are just some of them. There could be many other things which might work as an impediment for the scrum team. So friends, these are some of the most basic questions that you must prepare to answer effectively in your scrum interview. I sincerely hope that the video was helpful to you and if it was, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also. And if you want to stay updated with more such videos from Career Ride, subscribe to the channel now. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Till then, bye bye and take care.